Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio. Thank you for joining me today. Now you may be familiar with Active Directory with AD. You may not be familiar. Whatever the reason you're watching this video because you want to learn more, but we're gonna be showing you a brief overview, a brief introduction on what Active Directory looks like. Now we're assuming that you've already got some sort of a, like if you're doing this yourself, you've already got some server or something built. I do have other videos on how to build and configure a Windows Server if you do want to check some of those out. But we're going to show you some of the basic structure and parts of Active Directory. So we've logged into our 2019 server. So this is the latest operating system, the Windows Server operating system as of this video anyway. And we're gonna be showing you just a brief overview of Active Directory, the different parts, the different structure. So because this is just an introduction, if you wanna learn more around Active Directory specifically, even how to build a domain controller, how to configure AD from scratch, and then going into detail around Active Directory, group policies and all of these other technologies that are all sort of associated with Active Directory, then I would recommend going and checking out my training course. I've got a full online training course that you will definitely find helpful and it sort of adds to a lot of the stuff that we're gonna talk about in this video. In the description below of this video, you can check out a link to that training course, go and register for it. I've got other training courses that you will also find helpful if you are starting out in IT, if you're wanting to get better in technology and sort of move up that technology skill set and that technology ladder. So on our 2019 server right here, we've actually converted it and upgraded it to a domain controller. A domain controller essentially is where Active Directory lives and it's managing the domain, it controls the domain. So Active Directory lives here, and then you've got this thing called the domain that sort of lives in there as well. So all of the services and the roles have actually been installed onto this 2019 server to then convert it into a domain controller. Now, Active Directory is used thousands of companies across the world, and it's primarily used for obviously administering computers and users and security groups and permissions, servers, all of that, managing it, in one central consolidated location. So it makes it very, very easy to manage all of that together. Now you can open this up when you log into um, your domain controller, for example, under the Windows Administrative Tools, and into there you've got Active Directory Users and Computers. Now I will mention that when you install the domain controller roles and services, you get a whole bunch of other things as well as users and computers. You've got other AD related things such as sites and services, You've got an admin center, you've got modules, you've got domain trust, you've got some PowerShell stuff as well, but we're not gonna be covering that in this video. We are focusing on Active Directory users and computers. Now, the other thing is you don't have to run this from a domain controller, which is what we're doing right here. You can actually run this from any computer um, as long as you've got the admin tools installed and it's connected and pointing to the domain controller. So you could have another server with those tools and then essentially when you're opening up uh, users and computers, in the background, it's actually communicating to your domain controller. Or you could have your own Windows 10 PC with the AD uh, admin tools, and then you can access users and computers from there as well. So if you look at the structure under the demo domain, right, this is the domain. This sits under what's called a forest. So the forest is the top level. And then within a forest, which we've also called demo domain, there's a number of different domains. Now your company where you may work, for example, you may only have one single domain and that's fine. And in our case, it's just one single domain called demo domain. Underneath that, you've got a number, a number of folders. Some are pre-configured folders that have automatically been created, such as built-in, computers, uh, domain controllers, this is an OU, an organizational unit, this foreign one, manager, uh, managed and users. So these are some pre-configured um, OUs and folders essentially that have been created uh, when you actually go and configure the uh, domain controller and the Active Directory section. So generally you're gonna have all your computers, so all of your Windows 10 computers, your Macs, uh, if you're running Linux, things like that, you may have them sitting within a computers area right here. You've got all of your users. These are a group of security groups and users. Essentially a security group is a bunch of users 
that have got specific permissions. So for example, if you are a domain user, this is anybody who is a domain user. When you create a new user in an organization, when they start, for example, they're gonna be automatically added to this domain users um, security group by default. Then you've got, of course, a whole bunch of admin related ones. You've got domain admin. So generally, you can have somebody high up in an IT department, for example, that has domain admin rights and the only members of the domain admin security group will be the domain administrators or the, or the IT administrators that have that relevant um, permission, okay? Now, what I generally recommend is um, probably not using computers and users too much, but rather go and create your own hierarchy, your own OU structure underneath your actual domain. So what I've done here is I've got um, Australia, as you can tell from my dodgy accent, I'm from Australia. So I've created a new OU here called Australia. You can easily create OUs by right clicking on here and saying new, and here you've got OU or organizational unit. Under here, you can also create users. You can also create computers. You can create security groups. You can create a whole bunch of other things right from here, right? You've got a whole bunch of other tasks. You can also find, you can do a search within here. The find is actually really, really helpful, especially if you're working in a large organization and you've got thousands and thousands of computers, of users, security groups, etc. Sometimes you may not know where everything is located because there's so many different levels. Uh, so using the users, um, the, the find users contacts and groups, you can also say find computers, uh, you can find things very, very easily. So this is actually really, really helpful and has helped me out a lot. So as I said, uh, you've got the Australia OU. So I've just created a brand new folder, an organizational unit called Australia. And then within there, I've created computers, servers, and users. Now, the reason I want to do this is in the event where you've got a company, you've got maybe multiple sites, you've got multiple departments, you've got multiple, perhaps your company is in multiple states, in multiple cities, multiple companies. It doesn't make sense to have everything sticked in one place. If you want to stick everything into computers and into users, it's just going to be a huge list of things that are just going to be all over the place. So this is a bit of a housekeeping rule. You know, you want to go and create things that are in nice structures, nice OU structures like this, but there's actually some purpose behind it from an administration perspective because we can also look at things such as group policies. Group policies let you essentially apply particular rules and uh, settings and personalization functions and things like that to computers and servers on a network. And you can apply those against OU. So sometimes it makes sense to go and create a whole bunch of uh, uh, OUs yourself, okay? So where you work, wherever you may be, you may actually have a whole you know, range of OUs in here. You may have countries, you may have states, you may have other things in there structured differently. So under Australia, I've got my computers. Now what I'm gonna do is by default, when you've got all your computers on a network, Windows, Macs, for example, you go and create a new computer OU in here, my PC02, and we press OK. And now that's created essentially just a container called my PC02. And then when you have a computer on your network, a Windows 10 computer, you give that the name of my PC, and then you communicate that computer to this particular container and you bind that computer to Active Directory. All right, and then when you go into the properties, you'll see information in here that's automatically populated. It'll tell you the name, the version, so such as the operating system, if it's got service packs, etc. So it actually makes management really, really easy. You can also go and say, give this a description. You can say, this is John Smith computer. No, I spelt it wrong, but there you go. John Smith's computer. Servers, very similarly, I like to have a separate container for my servers. You create your servers in here. You then bind your servers to there. And then you've got users and I've got a couple in here. I've got myself, Emilio, and another user called John Smith. And um, you just create users. So really anybody who is a user of your network, anybody who has a computer, anyone who has a, um, you know, who's using a server, anything like that needs to have a user account in here. So you want to go and create user accounts. Now what's common as well is in some places under users, you may have further OUs and there could be one called marketing. And you could have another one in here called sales. All right. And essentially you just create OUs for each department. So if you've got a lot of staff, then you know exactly where the particular staff members in that department sit. So that's um, a little bit around OUs. 
Then what you can do around security groups, as I mentioned before. So if I've got John Smith here as a user, I can double click or I can right click and go into properties and I actually get a lot more information about John Smith himself. I can go and add a lot more information about him right in here. I can add address details, for example, where if he's working remotely, if he's working in an office, you want to add those specific information. Account, right in here, you've got his username. So his username is john.smith at demodomain.com. So when he logs into a computer, he's actually logging in as john.smith at demodomain.com. That is the domain that he's a part of, and that's his username. You can do things such as password never expires, user must change password at next logon. There's a lot of these different account options that you can go and set right from there. And there's a whole range more of things in here that you can do to actually set against John Smith. Another common one will be member of. Member of is, well, this is now where we're talking about security groups, right? So what security group is John Smith a member of? So by default, He's a member of domain users. And if I've double clicked on domain users right there, this is now the domain users property. And in here, I can see, well, members of this are, well, there you go. You've got all of my users. So myself, Emilio, and John Smith, and then administrator, which is there by default, are all users of, um, or all members of domain users. All right, so that's essentially how that works. Now, let's say, for example, I want to add John Smith to a domain admin security group because he's an admin. Uh, and in your case, you may have other security groups. Now, just the ones that have been created in AD, you don't have to use just those. You can actually go and create a whole range of security groups yourself. And then you apply them against servers, against systems. If you have file servers, you can add them against permissions. You know, this particular folder has this security group applied to it. So only those users that are part of that security group can access that folder or that file. So I can easily go into John Smith's properties right here, say add, I can then select domain, click on check name to just sort of see what's out there. It essentially does a scan and it's found, okay, so under domain, well, you've actually got a few. So I'm gonna select domain admins and select okay. So now domain admins is in here, I can say okay. And now you'll see that John Smith is a member of domain admins and domain users. I can apply and okay that. I can go back in and you'll see that member of, that he's a member of both of them right there. Now remember that that domain admin and domain users sits within here, within this users folder, okay, under the root of domain demo, demo domain, and here they are, domain users, domain admins. So if I now double click on domain admins and go into members, you'll see that there you go, there is John Smith listed. Okay, so John Smith has been added, and of course you can access that by going into users domain admins. You can go into his user account by going into users itself under Australia, users. Um, but here he is, John Smith is listed right there, and that's great. I can also double click on him, and then I've got access to his properties, which is essentially the window that we were just in just before. Now, of course, this is only the beginning for you. We've only just touched, skimmed the surface. AD can do a lot more. And there's a lot more things that you can configure and set up around group policies and getting computers, talking to Active Directory and security. But we gave you a bit of an overview that hopefully you found helpful. If you did, please do like, comment, and also subscribe to my channel. Do check out some of my other videos as well if you do want to learn more and you want to keep up to date with all things tech. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.